Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 623. How to Stimulate Your Immune System. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about what could be a complicated subject, but I'm going to make it very simple for you. Patients always ask me, how can I be healthier? What can I do to be healthier and to make sure that I don't get that disease that my grandmother had or that disease that my mother had or that cancer that my father had? How do I do that? What can I do now to prevent that in the future? And that's a really, really good question, and it ends up being kind of a complicated answer, but I'm going to simplify it for you. The one most important thing you can do and you can protect and take care of is your thymus gland, a gland you've never even heard of. The gland that sits behind your breastbone sits right here. When you're a baby, it fills your chest. And when you're old, it looks like a a shriveled up little nothing. So it gets smaller as we get older. The thymus gland has very important functions. And it is the source of your immunity, your, your cells that actually gobble up cancer cells, your cells that make antibodies, your cells that kill uh, bacteria and viruses. This is where they are um, made into those T cells that you hear about when you're talking about somebody who has an immune deficiency. They don't have T cells. They don't have T killer cells. They don't have T helper cells. So they therefore get cancers. So let me, let me back up. Let's talk about cancer for just a second. Cancer is one of the biggest fears my patients have, and I'm sure that's, that is um, globally true of almost everyone. And cancer, because the treatment and the cancer itself is just miserable. So preventing it is always very important. Well, cancer cells in your body happen all day long. In every body, everybody makes cancer cells. Cells that do not, when they divide, they don't divide normally. And they have um, DNA or RNA that is uh, not the same as the cell it came from, and it is a type of uh, a change that will cause the cell to keep dividing and become a cancer. So uh, that's simplistic for all you doctors out there. I didn't want to make it too complicated. (laughs) But that's really what happens. We have cancer cells right now. They're forming in our body. But our immune system, the cells that come from our, um, our thymus, actually kill them all. So if you want to avoid cancer, you have to protect your immune system. And your immune system is centered in your chest. That is Basically, it's between your breastbone and all of the uh, vessels and and your lungs. So you can't, in general, you can't stop it from shrinking somewhat as you get older. But you can keep it healthy in many ways. And, And the first way that I use, of course, is giving people who have lost their testosterone giving them back their testosterone because testosterone stimulates the thymus to stay as big as it is at adulthood and to continue to make T cells, T killer cells, T helper cells, to kill cancer cells and to um, counteract viruses and to counteract uh, bacteria. During this past two-year period of COVID, uh, the government didn't want us doctors to say, oh, this might protect you from COVID. This would protect you from COVID. But COVID was much worse in people whose immune systems were impaired. They, they had, um, basically, they had not taken care of themselves. They smoked, they drank, they um, didn't get enough sleep. People who were really debilitated got COVID much worse and may have, and, and honestly, 
were at risk of dying more than people who had taken care of themselves and were at ideal weight and were exercising because the thymus wasn't healthy in those, in those folks who have been not taking care of themselves, not eating right, having all kinds of toxins. That actually makes the thymus shrink and not work as much. If we can keep the thymus working, um, we knew that if we could continue to practice during COVID and give our patients the testosterone that they needed to pre prevent a severe form of COVID, and this kind of was what we were saying before the immunizations were out, but, we, but in truth, the studies that came out afterwards said that testosterone, people who had high testosterone or normal testosterone for an adult, not normal for an old person, but normal for an adult, um, actually had less severe COVID or didn't get it at all. Now, those studies came out after COVID, of course. But we knew the physiology of what testosterone does for people who are aging, and it backs your age up. It makes your immune your immune cells younger, basically younger than um, they are for your age. So you can fight all of these different invasions or cells that just don't divide properly and become cancerous. You can have more like policemen to um, take these cells out and to basically make your uh, body healthier. We can't stop the changes that the mistakes that cells make when they're dividing, we can't keep that from happening. That's just kind of part of being um, alive. A mammal, even, even non-mammals have cells that become um, abnormal, but they have the same type of immune system where they can attack those cells and get rid of them. It's one of the reasons when we have really good, a really good thymus and we have normal hormones when we're young, we don't get all of these diseases of aging. As, all, as our thymus shrinks and our testosterone goes down, we end up getting lots of different diseases and cancer rates go up. Um, to me, the best treatment or the best prevention for cancer is stimulating your immune system. So that, that's what we're going to talk about today. The, um, the thymus gland is uh, basically the power center for your immune system. And uh, the thymus gland has several, um, they're not, they're peptides that can stimulate the thymus gland. One is called um, thymosin alpha-1, which stimulates the thymus gland and helps your immune system uh, work more efficiently, more effectively, uh, take care of you better. Um, thymosin alpha-1 doesn't have a drug name assigned to it and is not made in um, normal pharmaceutical companies. It should be, but it isn't. Some of the um, companies or the compounding pharmacies that did make it were stopped during COVID from making it. I'm not sure what the, why that was true, because it would have helped us. Uh, but it, it was um, one of those things that I thought would help some of my patients who were immune suppressed. I couldn't get it at the time. The there's another um, peptide called thymulin, which also stimulates the thymus and gives you a better immune system. It, and it is available, but not by, in very many sources. Uh, but it is a good way to stimulate your thymus gland, but really the best way to stimulate your thymus gland and your health so that you don't, that you're resistant to these uh, cancer cells and infections is to actually replace the testosterone uh, that your body made normally when you were young, as you get old, to replace it. Make sure you have enough testosterone. Make sure that um, if you're female, that you have enough estrogen. So both of these hormones do help your immune system not only make more of those cells, but also be balanced. It makes your immune cells not go overboard, like some people have autoimmune diseases where their own immune cells are killing their own cells, and that's a, an imbalance of the immune system. Um, both thymulin, thymosin, and testosterone actually decrease uh, the severity and the incidence of autoimmune diseases. So those are two, two things. Autoimmune is probably something else I should have mentioned at the very beginning, along with cancer and um, immune deficiencies, 
But so just consider that one of the um, malfunctions of our body that we can actually help by um, making our thymus healthier. So let's look at the other, other types of things you can do to have the healthiest body and have the best immune system um, available. Uh, besides testosterone, another medication that uh, helps your immune system and improves its activity is metformin. Metformin is a very inexpensive drug. It's been used for a very long time. It's an oral tablet. It's inexpensive. And it is usually used for diabetes or prediabetes. For people who have poor immune systems, it is also a good drug to help them have better, more active immune systems. So taking uh, metformin is a good choice uh, in this instance. I mentioned the two peptides, thymosin alpha-1 and thymulin, and those are the two peptides, although the thymosin alpha-1 is currently unavailable. Um, some other peptides that stimulate uh, the immune system include sermorolin, which is a, an ipamorolin. They are both stimulators of the pituitary to make more growth hormone, and growth hormone also helps the immune system. But what if you don't want to go to the doctor, don't want to take a medication, um, don't think you need testosterone, which most of us over the age, women over the age of 40 and most men over 55 really need it. But let's say you don't feel like doing that. As the supplements that you can take uh, to improve your immune system, um, my favorite is, is Airborne. Airborne has all of the um, vitamins, minerals that stimulate the immune system. It has zinc, it has vitamin C, it has B vitamins. And you can take an Airborne if, uh, if you are going to be in a large crowd, if you are going to be in the air with, you know, just rebreathing all of the, uh, the air in an airplane. That's where it was first formed. It was first devised by flight attendants a flight attendant, designing this to try to keep her healthy while she was breathing everybody else's air while she was in a container uh, flying. So uh, Airborne is one of my favorite, easiest. You can find it almost anywhere. And, um, and you can just put it in a, a bottle of water and drink it down. It's very effective. But separately, the different uh, supplements that help your immune system are vitamin C, about 1,000 milligrams a day, you can take more. Vitamin D, 5,000 units a day. Zinc, 30 to 50 milligrams a day. Um, methyl B complex, which is the, the, the B vitamins that are methylated and go into your system faster. Uh, magnesium glycinate is one of the um, uh, minerals that help your immune system. Also, um, N-acetylcysteine. Uh, is a, a supplement that ha helps uh, your immune system work, and people who are chronically ill often take that. Inositol and choline are two, uh, pet are two um, fatty supplements, but um, they are very good for your immune system. And last but not least, glutathione. Glutathione is hard to take orally, but it's, um, it's very good if you get it IV, uh, orally, uh, you have to um, have it mixed with something that will help you absorb it. So those are all of the things that you can get at a health food store or at my office uh, or even Airborne's at the grocery store uh, to help your immune system effectively uh, fight off everything that's trying to um, make it sick. In terms of diet, the things you shouldn't do are fast foods. The things you shouldn't do are things with a lot of preservatives in it. Those things that last on your in your cupboard or in the refrigerator for a long period of time, those are things that have that have a lot of chemicals in them to keep them from going bad. Those are the things you don't want to eat a lot of. Um, going, I know it's a hassle, but going to the store often and getting fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, fresh eggs. Fresh animal protein, milk, and um, milk products, citrus fruits have vitamin C, so they're very good. Limiting caffeine to a couple cups a day, not overdoing it. And avoiding sugar and synthetic sugars like saccharin and equal. You can have um, 
you can have the uh, Truvia, which is a natural sugar. It's actually an herb. Uh, but the others actually make you not well or can make you not well. Um, and try avoiding dyed foods, foods that have food color in, in them. Now, exercise has always been known to improve your immune system unless you overdo it. It is not a good thing to always be running a marathon, and marathoners know that. They run marathons, but then they ratchet it back, and then they just run normally and at, um, on an everyday basis but because you can actually exercise too much and overwhelm your immune system so it doesn't work as well. But meaningful, regular exercise is very good for your immune system. Red light therapy, I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but you can get red light therapy, LED therapy, 20 minutes a day, usually at the end of the day, to help relax you, is, is a very good uh, help to your immune system. We actually have a red light spa that you can sit in for 20 minutes and get the red light effect throughout your body. And um, that helps you get more energy, and it also helps with your immune system. Sunshine, actual sunshine, without sunscreen and without uh, sunglasses for half an hour a day um, is very really stimulating to your immune system and it's it's a good idea then you can put your sunscreen on and your sunglasses but uh, 30 minutes at the most 60 minutes without any of the protection for your skin or eyes uh, is very healthy some of the medications to avoid that actually hamper your immune system include statins um, steroid hormones like um, prednisone or um, medrol dose pack they all give you a lot of cortisone, which suppresses your immune system. Um, cancer treatments, like radiation and chemotherapy, uh, they actually suppress your immune system. And then um, auto, drugs for autoimmune diseases that decrease your immunity. You hear it, you see it on television all the time when they have all these happy people running around without psoriasis. Well, those, those are called biologics, and they suppress your immune system. They don't just suppress the immune system that is causing the psoriasis. They suppress your whole immune system. So that means you're at a higher risk of getting sick from viruses, cancer, or anything. So you have to be very careful with that. Now, if it's just a, if you want to just clean up your act on your um, habits, not just food, but other things, then avoiding all tobacco products and anything that is smoked, like marijuana, um, that is... I mean, why, if you're going to continue to smoke, that suppresses your immune system. So, I mean, you've, you've pretty much um, set yourself up for having one of these diseases in the future if you continue to smoke. Just a terrible idea. Um, if you live in a polluted city, uh, air pollution, you should have an air purifier at your desk or in your home to take out the, some of the pollutants. They're very, they're very bad for us, and I think we're only touching the tip of the iceberg now about how bad they are for us. But um, the Clean Air Act helped us somewhat, but there's still things in the air that are uh, that actually um, trigger abnormal cell development and also uh, shut down our immune system. The uh, fast food and all of the uh, sugar, salt, and every, all of the other additives in it are bad for us. Any kind of simple sugars Sitting around and being a couch potato is very unhealthy. Uh, and I did this for years. Shift work, where you're working at night and, and working in, during the day, or just working at night and sleeping during the day, that's really stressful for your body. Your body was made to sleep at night and be awake during the day. And when you change that diurnal cycle, that stresses your body. And your body then is not going to be as healthy when you're doing that. If you notice, people on night shift usually are obese. Their body isn't working normally. And, um, but it's one of those things that some of us have to do as doctors, nurses. I mean, people have to be taken care of at night. But um, rotating off that schedule is important so that you can get really good sleep at night. That makes you healthier. Then I talked about your tap water and tap water having fluoride in one of our other health casts. Um, fluoride's great for your teeth, but it's really bad for your thyroid and it's really bad for many other things. So fluoride is not uh, the wonderful panacea they say it is. 
dentists may say that. But there's there are other chemicals in your tap water that you don't even know about. I have a patient who actually works in that industry, and he told me we they have chemicals in there to keep your any pipes that have lead in them, and hopefully there's almost none by now, but any lead pipes, they keep the lead pipes from leaching into the water. Well, okay, that's great for a tiny proportion of the people, but that chemical is bad for us. I won't say it's carcinogenic, but it is, it is not good for us. Putting chemicals in to prevent things like that that are going to damage our bodies is not healthy for us, and we don't even know it's in there. Um, so pur purified water or water that is, uh, I hate to say bottled water, but filtered water is better for us. So now obviously all of these things can't be done by one human, but if you can, if you can go through this list and try to clean up your life, try to make it healthier, um, try to exercise more and change your, your eating habits, your add supplements so that you will be healthier than um, in 20 minutes I have finally answered. <laughs> I have finally answered that simple qu question, how can I be healthier and not get cancer and, and um, not get infectious disease? So it's a complicated answer and it's multifactorial. But I hope that you can at least find some of these things in your life that you can clean up so that you can be healthier and you can have um, a longer life without disease. That's what we do at Biobalance Health with our patients, and that's what I hope that you can do or you can see a doctor who will do the same thing for you. So thank you for listening today. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.